All right, I am happy to announce that I have completed this proxy tool. Uh, this is another episode here of Black Hat Python. On the last one, you know, if you haven't seen it already, definitely check it out. I kind of ma map out what we're doing with this program here and this uh, proxy that we're building with Python. And I covered most of the functions except for two of the biggest functions. All right, so we're going to cover those two here today first, and then I'm going to demo this in action, actually using it. And it'll start to make sense to you guys a lot more what this is doing once you actually see it in action. But the first function that we built out since last time is this proxy handler function. And so it's going to actually take in a number of parameters. Now, these parameters are, as I, I'll show you when we step through the full program, uh, these are taken from the user input from the command line. But uh, it's basically taking in the client socket, remote host, remote port, and uh, this Boolean receive first. And essentially what it's doing from there is setting up a connection, connecting uh, to the remote host and remote port, the remote socket, I guess we should say. And if that receive first Boolean was true, then, you know, and when it would be true is in a situation where you know, you might be dealing with something like an FTP server where you expect it to send you some data first, uh, aka a banner, right? So, you know, oftentimes if you ever connect to an FTP server before, as soon as you try to connect to it, it'll first send you the banner. So in cases like that, we will have this receive first function uh, here. And well, actually, I guess it's part of the proxy handler function. It's not a really a separate function, but we'll basically be receiving that data, populating into the remote buffer, and uh, assuming that the buffer has any data there at all, we're going to print that we received and how many bytes we received, and we're going to do a hex dump of it. Remember, uh, in the previous video, we have our hex dump function here, which is basically just f uh, showing everything in hexadecimal and then also showing the strings. So that was just some processing on the on the data coming in to give it give us that uh that hex dump output that we're looking for right so that's what that's going to do and then we're going to send to the response handler in case we want to modify the data at all you know like we have our proxies here in this case we're keeping this pretty simple we're not going to really do any modifications to the request or the response but if we wanted to it would be inside these respective functions here now Basically, once we do that, we're, and we send, we're going to send the data off, uh, you know, the remote data, and we're going to say that we sent it to the local. And from there is where the bulk of the things are happening, right? This while loop here, it's just basically just sitting here and waiting for incoming data. And so if any time the server sends data back to us through the proxy, we're going to say that we received it, and we're going to give you the hex dump, and then we are going to go ahead and wait for data to send back the other way, right? And once we get that data, we are going to send that off and say that we sent it. And then... Pretty much, uh, well, yeah, once we receive the data, you know, so on and so forth, right? We're constantly going to be waiting to see if any data is sent from the other end. If so, we're going to hex, uh, hex dump that and then wait to see if the user sends any data back, right? And basically, if there is no data to send or receive, we're just going to close out the connection. And, uh, yeah, you'll see that in action here in a bit. Basically, we have a timeout function here in uh, receive from, and we're defining the length that we're going to wait before we consider the connection timed out. And that's something we can adjust as needed. But yeah, that's pretty much how this is going back and forth. Now, the other function that we did build out as well is the server loop function. And so... For this one is kind of just initially setting everything up. So we have uh, a bunch of parameters here that we receive from the user because this is actually the first function that's called. If, if we go to the main function down below, we'll see, you know, 
assuming the user provided all the necessary fields, we're going to go ahead and set those according to the arguments from the command line. And then if the user said uh, receive first is true, then we're going to set it to true, else we'll set it to false. And then we're going to call the server loop function, passing in those parameters. And that's pretty much it for the main function. So the server loop is the first location that the program will jump to. Now, when it's in here, it's going to set up the connection, the socket, right? And then it's going to try to bind the socket that the user uh, provided for the local host and the local port. So typically 127.0.0.1 and then whatever port uh, is specified there. And, you know, if there's any errors, it's going to it's gonna tell you. And uh, L, otherwise, if it is working properly, it's going to say that it's listening on that socket. And then it's going to listen for up to five connections simultaneously. That's how we're going to multi-thread this. And the while loop is where the listening is actually happening. It's continuously going to listen until we cancel it, you know, with a control C or whatever, right? We're closing out of the terminal, however you do it. And uh, the, it's basically going to set the client socket and address, um, waiting for a connection to accept. And when, once it does, then it's going to say that it received the connection, and it's going to tell you where it received the connection from. And, yeah, it's going to set this proxy thread, you know, for the multi-threading here. And what it's going to do is, this is how it's, uh, it's actually going to, to set these arguments here from the user, right? And it's going to start a new thread at that point. So here it passes it to the proxy handler function, and it's actually passing the arguments from the command line all the way into this proxy handler function, right, that we, we just covered, right? This is where, like I said, the meat and potatoes of the program really is where a lot of the work is being done. And, uh, yeah, so that, that's pretty much all it is with the server loop. And... From there, it's going to start a new thread to wait for another connection because, like I said, it can support up to five simultaneously as we specified right here. And, yeah, that's pretty much all, all there is to it. it. It's honestly fairly straightforward. Uh, let me go ahead and show you in action using a another FTP server. That way I can showcase the banner and all that, right? So the way I'm going to do this is actually going to run the command like so, right? And, and so here, we're going to actually be setting the proxy. Now, I'll show you if if I were just to not specify the, the number of commands that it's looking for, it will say, hey, this is the usage here. So we got the local host. Okay, so we'll step through how we're doing this here. We're going to say sudo because we're using port 21, which is a, you know, a, a, a port that is normally reserved. You know, you can't use it without elevated permissions. So that's why I'm going to specify sudo here and proxy.py. So the next thing is the local host. So we're going to provide that, 127.0.0.1. The local port, we're going to bind to 21. And then the remote host, we're actually going to use this FTP server here for demonstration purposes because this is an FTP server we can actually interact with. It's an actual one out there that you could use as well. Uh, now, obviously, if you have your own FTP server, you could use that. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes, it'll make it easier. And the remote port, it's uh, this particular FTP service happens to be running on the standard port 21. And then the receive first. You know, since this is an FTP server, it's going to send us a banner. So we need to say that, hey, it's going to be sending us some data uh, beforehand. So be ready to receive that. So that is one thing that we can go ahead and do. So now it's, it's listening here. So... Maybe I should have done this first, but I can come over here and now just say FTP, the local host, because remember, we have our proxy set up. So we did that, and it connected, and now we see here that it received an incoming connection from the local host on this, what is, this is what's known as an ephemeral port. Uh, this is just what the system chose. Now, this is very slow. That is one thing to note about this. Um, maybe that is something to look into how to speed this up. I think the reason it's so slow is because it's traversing the network and going through our proxy. Maybe if it was a FTP server that we owned and controlled, it would be quite a bit faster because it wouldn't have to traverse as far on the internet as it does. But the login for this 
FTP Sun ACZA FTP server is anonymous anonymous, you know, the standard there. Now, as you see here, this is the hex dump output that we, you know, we, we created in that hex dump function. Now you see the hexadecimal and the strings here. And that's why we set it up that way. So we have a nice clean output here, uh, just like you would on any hex dump tool. And you can see we also had it output how much data we're sending and receiving and which direction is it going. The arrow is a nice little visual indicator. So now it's prompting us for the password. We'll put anonymous there as well. And another thing to note is this is an unencrypted protocol. We're not using any SSH or anything like that to encrypt the data. So that's another reason why we can see everything in plain text. And the fact that I put in the password anonymous that's going to showcase it here in a second because we're actually going to see that I typed anonymous because it is unencrypted, right? Pass anonymous. And so uh, just something to keep in mind. Now, we can encrypt this using uh, SSH or a, uh, a library, a crypto library, and that is actually something we're going to do in the next little project here using Paramico. So if that sounds interesting to you, we're definitely going to be covering that. Now we see the login was successful here, but now I'm kind of waiting for them to send back the data where I have the, you know, input, the FTP little uh, thing at the beginning prefix. So I can tell that I'm in FTP and then I can start entering FTP commands and interacting with this server. Uh, the only difference is I'm just funneling it through my proxy so I can you know, get a good view of the data being sent and received using, uh, you know, the hex dump, the hexadecimal there. Or, you know, obviously, like I said before, if I wanted to do any kind of modifications to the request or the response, I could code that in here as well. Uh, so it's really good for understanding unknown protocols. And here we go here. I can type in help to see what my options are. Uh, you know, obviously I could do a number of things here. I'm just going to go ahead and exit out here at this time because I think you guys pretty much get the idea. I'll send the buy signal here and uh, we should see that come through here in a minute. So interesting thing though is when you type help, that's not sending anything across the network. It's just straight up on your local system showing you what your options are. So that was some interesting thing to note. You know, you get to know the protocol a, a little bit better, right? So now you see the quit signal being sent here. And there's a hexadecimal that corresponds to it right there. And uh, yeah, goodbye was what it sent back. And then it said no more data closing connections. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, us interacting with an FTP server uh, by proxying the traffic. And we see a nice clean output here that we put in. Now, I did notice this error timed out here sent with all the requests. It seemed that everything was working properly. Uh, I don't know why I was getting the error necessarily. Uh, maybe it had something to do with this FTP server here or maybe some kind of network uh, issue that was taking longer than expected because we did notice it did take quite a bit of time between uh, requests and responses before we saw anything. Maybe there was some kind of, uh, you know, latency with the network that was causing it to show that but the good news is we still it still did work properly we were able to send and receive the data get the hex dump and all that so not exactly sure what that was about but yeah hopefully this video was of help to you guys i definitely enjoyed learning this it was definitely a good learning experience for me uh next video we're going to start a new project on encrypting our data as we send it through uh using paramico which is a nice handy library for Python uh, for doing exactly that. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stay tuned. Uh, should be making some content on that next week. And uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button as well to help get the message out there. If you're interested in more cool Python tricks you can learn and things like that, check out the Black Hat Python playlist. If you haven't watched all the videos up to this point, I would definitely recommend it. I'll see you guys right over there. And thanks for watching.